Comes the guy in the white t-shirt, Bubba Watson, former Masters golf champion, encouraging the bidder. Bubba's got a couple of cars of his own. We've all seen the collector car auctions on TV. The two biggest ones are Barrett Jackson and Meekum. Dream cars polished to the nines going across an auction stage that was built specifically to make the cars look like priceless works of art. And some of them are, with bids on sought after pieces like Plymouth Superbirds and factory one offs fetching figures well into the millions. And here I am going to one as a bidder. If you take a look at the two big auction shows like Pro Sports, Barrett Jackson is definitely the pro team. Celebrity bidders and hobnob millionaires. Eh, all guys who have pushed well beyond the AARP acceptance age on their third marriage and trying desperately to recapture their youth with their wallets. Meekum Auction would be the semi-pro team. Well, sure, there's still big money wafering around the block like a man in a 10-year-long midlife crisis reeking of Old Spice. The cars, Meekum Auctions, tend to be more... realistic. Sure, they auction the big money cars like AC Cobras and Ford GTs. Meekum does probably four times more the auctions every year than Barrett Jackson does, meaning that there's a lot of filler cars. You see, it's not every day that rare cars like a Shelby GT350R go up for auction. So the filler cars are added. These aren't so much collector cars as they are just nice cars. Nice cars that you can usually find while trolling Craigslist that catch your eye. While they pale in comparison to the sought after cars at the big auctions, you still turn your head to see one on the streets. And that's what I'm going after. And it's a lot like going to court for your fifth driving under suspension charge. You're hoping for the best, but expecting the worst for your first time participating in one of these. Whether the experience will be good enough for me to go back and try someday, or be it so bad I will never ever do it again, the realistic expectation is that it's an experience that I'm going for, and if I get to take the car home, so be it. The car. Oh, the car. God, yeah. What's the car I'm going after, you might ask? Well, if you watch this channel at all, you'd already know, but if you're new here, I'll give you a laugh, I guess. I'm going after a 1990 Chevrolet Beretta. This one is the pace car replica known as the Beretta Indy, a one-year-only trim package with decidedly 90s graphics down the side. <laughs> oh, rareness. Uh, it's a bit it's it's a bit in dispute within uh, the small but ferocious uh, loyal Beretta community uh, how rare this car is. GM says there were 7,500 of the pace car replicas made in two colors, yellow and teal. 6,000 of the teal and 1,500 of the yellow ones, respectively. Though other sources have come out over the years to claim that there were only 3,000 of the teal ones built, which would make a bit more sense as it's a general consensus in the Beretta community that the teal ones are just as rare anymore as the yellow ones. Again, making sense to me personally, I'm on my second yellow one and have never owned a teal one, though it's on the Beretta bucket list for my collection. And that brings me back to this particular Beretta. Now, total disclosure, my max bid isn't that high for a couple of reasons. Number one, I am waist deep in a full race car build right now, building another Chevy Beretta to run e-production on the national level in SCCA. Number two, while a teal Beretta is on the bucket list, I like my Berettas to have three options, as does most of the rest of the Beretta community. <clears throat> Sunroof, Digidash, and a 5-speed. And this Indy only has the Digidash. Number three is all the taxes, buyer's premium, and bullshit tacked onto the sale, which in reality isn't that much, but because the previously mentioned two things, if it goes beyond my max bid, I'll let it go and just wait for the next opportunity. And finally, number four, while the mileage 
on that on this uh, Beretta Indy is super low museum quality at 2500 the rest of the car isn't as indicative to that museum quality well the headliner's sagging there's paint damage to the chin spoiler the right front headlight is super crooked meaning there could be damage behind it the door trim isn't lining up with the body it's missing the firewall splash guards, though it's kind of in dispute right now on the Beretta website whether this one particular one came with the splash guards or not. And of course, the dash is all falling apart, but that's kind of par for the course for these cars. And I could tell all this just by the pics on Meekum's website. Why do I think I can afford it? Well, you know, the aforementioned things, I know it's wrong with it. But this is a collector car auction, and while pace car replicas can be quite collectible, the Beretta in any trim has yet to see its up and comments in collector car status. The reason the Beretta, or the Ford Taurus SHO, or even the Shelby Dodge Daytona Zs haven't reached that status yet is because of the muscle car era cars well overstaying their welcome. As we roll into our final few moments with you, let's run down our top sellers from a little earlier in the day today. Remember the 1970 Hemi Challenger RT convertible? $1.65 million. That's our number three car. Number two, the lovely Snow White 71 Hemi Cuda convertible. One of five automatic transmission Hemi Cuda convertibles in 71. 2.3 million dollars but our number one car of the day today the highly optioned 70 hemi cuda convertible four speed one of five in that configuration in 1970 numbers matching engine and mostly original on the sheet metal 2.675 million dollars hemi fever rules the muscle car market is so oversaturated with buyers right now that the shops that are restoring these cars, they can't keep up. That demand means that a 69 Copo Camaro rusted out, sitting in a field for so long there's a tree growing up where the motor used to be, is still worth 20 grand. Now, the most any Beretta has sold for across Meekum or Barrett-Jackson's auction block has been $24,000, and that was one of the two surviving actual Pace cars from the Indianapolis 500 back in 2012, and one of only three Berettas that have ever crossed the Barrett-Jackson auction block. That being said, the big money that's at Meekum is there for the collector cars. I've seen similar cars with little to no collector value cross Meekum's block and sell for a grand. Yep, a measly thousand bucks to buy a collector car off the auction block. The fact too that it's going at the end of the last day of the auction also plays into my favor, hoping that all the big money is gone by then, although <laughs> my buddy Brian did bring up a good point that there could be someone there who didn't get the car they wanted and still brought a trailer and still want to take something home. And while I didn't want to hear it, I appreciated Brian telling me this because it brought me back down to earth about actually being able to bring the car home. Brian's a great friend and because even he can tell that behind the facade of staying cool about this, I truly want the car and for this to be more than just a learning experience. So, in a week, I'm hooking up the truck to the race car trailer and making the two hour drive to Kissimmee, Florida in what's likely to be, win or lose the car, a flurry of emotions trying to obtain my own piece of the collector car's dream. With any luck, it'll be in my trailer and be joining my other four Berettas when it's all said and done. Now, thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to check out the description below for links to the Cruisers Gaming and Motorsports Facebook groups, Twitch, and the newly formed Patreon page, which I made entirely too late to help me out with this auction. <laughs> uh, please excuse the voice. I am still uh, getting over 
two and a half weeks of having a, a chest cold. It's been miserable. Thank you all for, for sticking in there and hanging with me. I appreciate it. You all are really great friends. And remember, those friends, they're the family you get to choose. I'll see you next week, fellow cruisers.